30 years ago, there was not a single megawatt of offshore wind power on the planet. The journey since has been spectacular. Offshore wind farms will generate enough electricity to power every home in the UK within a decade. Globally, 1,400 gigawatts of offshore wind could be achievable by 2050. First-generation wind farms are now nearing the end of their lifetimes. How can we decommission them as cleanly and cost-effectively as possible? And how can we create a circular economy for turbines and components? The wind industry is researching and developing many approaches. Moving beyond recycling to reuse, remanufacturing, component refurbishing and upgrades. Extending turbine lifetimes from 25 years now to 40 years and beyond is another approach that could drastically reduce material use. The wind industry can lead the way for many other industries in adopting a circular economy approach to its current and future operations. The offshore renewable energy catapult is engaging industry, academia and policymakers in research and technology innovation for a circular economy. We're working with a growing investment by governments and the offshore wind industry on a raft of new projects in this arena. Let's look at scenarios for today's generation of turbines. Turbine design is evolving rapidly, but we'll take an average wind turbine of today as an example. Already 85 to 90% of the turbine is recyclable, but we should be aiming for better options like lifetime extension, reuse and designing out waste from the start. Most turbines sit upon steel monopile foundations. Many decommissioning plans propose cutting foundations from 1 to 2 metres below the seabed for a pristine restoration of marine conditions. It is possible to lift the monopile and its transition piece entirely from the sea floor. Most of this material can be recycled into good as new steel. Repurposing monopile remnants into artificial rock reefs is being developed by Cornwall's ARC Marine. Using 98% recycled materials from the local quarrying industry, ARC is turning non-reusable sand and stone into havens for marine life within a turbine scour and seabed protection. By finding ways to extend the lifetime of steel and concrete in marine environments, we can also minimise disruption to sea life and reduce materials. Cutting and leaving cables in the seabed has been common practice for over a century. Billions of pounds worth of valuable and reusable materials lie on the ocean floors. These materials could be a rich mine of future cables. Recovery, that is grappling, of cables has been around for 150 years or more. With today's remote operated vessels, this is fast becoming a profitable option for the wind sector. Recovered cables can be separated into metals and plastics by cutting and shredding the components. The ultimate goal is to design them for longer lifetimes, so they could be leveraged for a repowered site or be made from more sustainable materials. Internal workings, such as generators and gearboxes, can be refurbished. Scotland's renewable parts has shown how components like these, and even entire turbines, can be refurbished and guaranteed for second lifetimes. Where refurbishment is not an option, metals such as copper, aluminium and steel can be stripped from the nacelle for 90% recyclability. The use of microbes for recovery of rare earth materials from components is actively being investigated around the world, but requires significant space. UK SME Greenspur has developed an alternative to rare earth magnets using more abundantly available ferrite. Blades are commonly made of fibreglass composites that are hard to recycle and rarely age well enough for refurbishment and reuse. There are 2.5 million tonnes of composite material in the world's wind farm blades today, but that is just a small proportion of all composite plastics. That's why a recycling solution is a multi-industry effort spanning aerospace, oil and gas, automotive, leisure and many others. Potential solutions under consideration are pyrolysis, that is extreme heat treatment, servolysis, 
that is chemical treatment to recover fibres, resins and energy. Milling and grinding blades for use in construction, as well as using sections in civil engineering and housing, are all now possible too. Edinburgh SME ActBlade has trialled a different approach, using lightweight, stiffer textile-inspired blades that are less difficult to recycle. This approach cuts material use from the start and presents a blueprint for blades made from recycled materials too. By 2050, advances in self-healing and biomaterials mean that blades could live many lifetimes with zero waste. The turbine tower is the biggest and heaviest component, having doubled in height in the past 20 years. Finding lighter and more durable materials for multiple lifetimes is the priority. Concrete is being investigated as an option that could double a tower's lifetime, offsetting the higher CO2 emissions. The wind industry has achieved feats of engineering that will make our net zero planet possible. Over the next 30 years, wind will expand, turbines will grow in size and energy output, push into deep water sites, shift to robotic operations and maintenance, fuel a green hydrogen economy, and mesh into a supergrid of the future. Achieving zero waste and zero carbon are essential to every aspect of this future. It's an exciting journey ahead. Be part of the conversation.